Happy Friday, Anthony Special here with Special Analysis for another cut of unedited and on the edge of the market. So what we are going to do today is something a little bit different. Uh, we've looked at a handful of tickers over the past couple weeks. So I'm gonna, I want to take a moment to kind of recap this, um, wrap our head around it. The market has been rather difficult the past couple weeks, a uh, couple months. Uh, since the turn um, from the top at about you know the change of the year basically so uh, since January it's been it's it's been, there's been a rough go uh, there's a lot of push and pull uh, a lot of pullbacks uh, have we made the turn and are we going to go higher from here we don't know is this an impulse uh, a correction from an impulse to go lower we don't know yet that's still yet to be seen uh, but we've had a few successful trades we've had a few trades that flopped. Um, for the difficulty level of, of what the market is handing us right now, uh, I, I think we should be pretty proud of what we've we've put out there. Simply because, uh, even if you watch CNBC today, you know guys that have been trading for 30, 40 years, they, they'll all tell you uh, this is just a tough time. Um, there's just a bit of indecision, uh, and, and that indecision comes from uh, lack of commitment and direction. And, and it is what it is. It it just these periods occur. Uh, throughout throughout the, your career as a trader, as your career as an investor, it is what it is. You have to just learn to deal with it. So I thought what we do today is do a recap. Uh, I won't spend a ton amount of time on each stock ticker, but uh, or each you know individual ticker. But I just want to graze over them. Uh, all this is published on TradingView, um, social media, you know, write ups, things of that nature. So you can find it in reference to it. But I'm going to pop up the chart. We're just going to walk through them one by one. Uh, and I want to start with the losers. And the reason I want to start with the losers is there's not enough market experts out there or gurus or whatever you want, whatever the hell you want to call uh, us, me, uh, what I do for a living, um, that are, are willing to own, you know, when things go shitty. And, and guess what? I'm willing to own it uh, because it is a fact of life. It is a part of trading. Um, and it is what it is. Listen, even the most conservative setups will fail from time to time. So we're going to start off with NVIDIA. We spoke about it a couple, you know, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. We had this great breakout, textbook, confirmation, everything, placed this nice swing stop here, and it just didn't work out. Um, it, it rolled over with the rest of the tech sector. Uh, you're going to see that the, the losing trades that we did take were... Um, you know, two were in the tech sector, two, two winners were also in the tech sector, it was just on the other side of the move, um, and, and it, it is what it is. So, you know, we took a loss here. It happens. This is why we have protective stops in place. Uh, this, in fact, gapped past our stop, so we had a little greater stop than we would have anticipated. I think we were trying to, to limit it to 7%, we ended up with about 12% loss. This is the facts of life. This, this happens, um, and we just have to deal with it. So, Intel also was a flop. Same scenario. Um, this had failed in the past. Breakout, failed breakout, broke out, confirmed. It just rolled over, uh, and it gave it back. It just, it is what it is. So, these two were definitely losses. Um, no question about it. The, the setup was correct. It just didn't transpire. So, again, you know, whatever you want to call what I do for a living, uh, something I do that is much different than the rest of my colleagues. And I'm not saying a traders agency, I'm just saying a broad stroke. Uh, nobody talks about the losers. Uh, then somebody buys an educational program and, and next thing you know, they open it up and they go, holy shit, this guy's got a ton of losers. I didn't, I didn't expect this. Listen, every, every portfolio is going to have losing traits. It's, it's unavoidable. Um, we want to keep them minimal. We want to keep them controlled, and we want to know that we're going to outweigh them with our winners. And that's exactly what we've done here. So the average of the two losses that we have taken on uh, Intel and on um, NVIDIA have been wiped away by the gains that we took on Tesla. We had the breakout here. This follow through. I firmly believe, in all honesty, that this transpired because Elon Musk had purchased a uh, 9% share, uh, an active holding in Twitter. Here nor there, it, it did work for us. So we had a nice run, filled our target. Um, I mean, it filled our target by a couple dollars, but this is why we use a 1% buffer. 
because uh, it works perfectly. We, you know, the price action does not always test completely, so we need to take that into account. We're not going to let a good trade turn into a losing trade because we got greedy. We don't believe in being greedy. We believe in being disciplined and having a structure, uh, you know, and consistent trade plan that works for us over time. So this wipes away a good portion. Apple, while a smaller, um, you know, percentage gain, also between Twitter and Apple, we wipe away our losses on Intel and Nvidia. So. Does it suck? Yes. Is this part of the deal? Yes. Am I happy to break even between four stocks during an extremely difficult time in the market? Also yes. So I'm not terribly upset. We have two positions that I'm watching that are open. Um, one that's open that we're, we're playing currently and another one that I'm eyeing up uh, you know, to potentially enter tomorrow morning. Uh, Google is still open. This trade has not stopped us out yet. Um, we were working in a, in a good good motion towards our target. I was fairly happy with the way this reacted. Uh, this did roll over. This did not get a full 1%. So there's no confirmation here to, to sell this. Um, the best I could hope for is this area of indecision holds this price action and pushes it higher. With that being said, the next ticker I'm going to show you um, is a ticker you know, designed in a trade setup designed to actually short another technology stock because the downside volatility seems to be here to stick around for a little while. How do we know that? We know that by looking at the NASDAQ chart. We're going to do that in just a second. Uh, but the next ticker I'm looking at is Netflix and FLX. And if we dial in here to this structure here, here's our daily structure. Um, we had a close with confirmation. How do we confirm that? We measure to make sure that from the channel structure to the close of the bar, we have at least 1%. More than 1% is desirable, but never less than 1%. Um, so the likeliness is as long as price continues to close below this ascending channel, which was at one point support and is now proven to be resistance, we should complete what's called a channel extension, meaning this price action should at some point test this lower channel bottom this lower teal ascending line so is it going to happen i don't i don't know um but if the volatility does you know continue as i anticipate it to um this could fill tomorrow uh this could be a very 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 quick trade so we're going to watch it we'll see what happens but but it is you know it is hitting the radar at this point um couple other things that we looked at so we had four stock trades that are closed two winners two losers we're basically a break even we're maybe one you know one or two percent ahead um, not terrible for a bad market we have Google open we have this uh, Netflix idea that just kind of came to fruition at the close of today um, and then we're gonna jump into the futures market so we had an excellent run on gold, and this is a couple weeks ago, but uh, for those of you who were not here, uh, I'll recap it for you. This candle here was our breakout, our confirmation, and this was our target. So this was a Friday night, this was Monday's action, this was Tuesday's action. We were in and out uh, with approximately 1,100 ticks. So when we talk about futures or we talk about commodities, we're going to talk in ticks uh, as opposed to percentages in stocks. So we're, we're a little ahead on the, our stocks, but we did really, really well with our uh, commodities and our futures. And that's, in all honesty, where I specialize. Um, that's what I, I've personally been trading for about a decade. So this gold trade worked out flawlessly. It's so about 1,100 ticks, which equates to about $11,000 per E-mini contract traded. So this is, uh, you know, this definitely pushes us into the green, um, you know, knowing that we just basically balanced out money playing with stocks. Next one I want to look at is the S&P 500. This trade transpired right here. Here's our breakout. This was not 1%. This candle, in fact, was. And we traded it up towards right here where we found some... Uh, we found resistance. So we came, of course, a little shorter resistance. I think it was about 480 uh, ticks, roughly, was the um, close to exact movement. And that 480 ticks is worth 
six thousand U.S. dollars. So we have eleven thousand in gold, six thousand uh, in the S and P. So we're, you know that's a seventeen thousand um, dollar you know opportunity, and that's trading just one E mini contract, just one. Um, you know, I'm not going to get carried away with multiples. Just one E-mini contract. So you got 11 in gold. You got six um, here in the S&P. Like I said, the stocks were basically at about break even. We got two more ideas in play. We'll see what happens with them. The final chart that we're going to look at is the NASDAQ. Uh, and this is why I, I, I say the NASDAQ leads me to believe that you know, the Google trade may knock us out, uh, but the Netflix trade may in fact fill. Um, you know, so with that being said, we, we're seeing some downside continuation here. Um, there's two setups here. The first setup that transpired already was a weekly settlement here with a run up into this area here, about 1,225 ticks roughly, uh, when I counted out exactly, also worth another $6,000. Uh, 6,000 US dollars for one e-mini contract. So this transpired well. What am I expecting? Um, so I'm watching this closely for the end of the week as we, you know, this video will come to you on Friday. Um, at the end of Friday, Friday evening, I'll be looking to see where this price settles. If this price, settle, price settles and offers me the opportunity to short the NASDAQ, um, I have support descending here on this blue this bottom blue channel um, I'll be looking to trade towards it so I'll have to measure my risk I'll have to measure my reward I'll have to have my 1% weekly confirmation if I get all of that um, we could be looking at a shorting opportunity here in the Nasdaq which will of course hurt our Google position but uh, you know we'll push along our Netflix position that one should watch the other fairly closely puts us at a break even on stock plays. But 11,000 in gold, 6,000 on the S&P, another 6,000 on the NASDAQ already tied up. So that's 12 and 11, that's $23,000 worth of US dollar opportunity um, that we have offered you. You know, as we put out in these videos, uh, listen, I'm, they're not official trade alerts. Uh, of course, I can't give you personal or unique trading advice. But just so you know what you're looking at, what the value of what you're, is being shared with you. Um, you know, our, while most guys that are running stock programs are handing out losers, um, you know, a losing portfolio, we've remained break even. So for that, we're proud of that. Um, in the way of the futures market, I mean, the indexes and gold, particularly in this instance of these trades, we have been wildly profitable. Um, Again, I'm t telling you this with just the cost of one e-mini contract. Uh, recap on 11,000 on gold, six on the NASDAQ, six on the S&P. So again, that's uh, a total of $23,000 worth of opportunity had you been following along with the ideas I've been sharing, sharing in the videos, sharing in the Better Way of Wealth write-up uh, that I, I published through Traders Agency, sharing through TradingView.com, sharing through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, um, I, in every facet that I can share this information with you, that's what I'm doing. So I just want you to know what you had received if you were not fully aware, um, and not that you needed to be fully aware, but just I want you to understand the value that you're getting. So if you guys are enjoying these videos, if you're enjoying this content, if you're putting some of it to work, congratulations. Uh, you know, you've, you've, if you followed along, you, did, you probably did very well for yourself. Um, so with that, I, I just want to wrap up. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. Uh, looking forward to the weekend, relaxing with my family. Uh, I hope you're going to do the same and we'll reconvene next week. We're, you know, we'll start off the week with our major market, uh, weekly update. And then we'll of course pick our way through the market, um, you know, each and every day. But I thought it was important to just take a minute and circle back on, on what we've accomplished in such a short period of time, uh, compared to what's being accomplished in the industry out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of great traders out there, a lot of great gurus or market experts or whatever you want to call us. Uh, but we want to really hone in on the best high probability, low risk trades, you know, keep, keep our, our accounts in the black, um, in the green preferably, and, uh, and just whatever the market throws at us, be able to absorb it, uh, digest it, and then, you know, implement it. So, 
Again, it's Friday. I appreciate your time. I know I kind of went on. This was a longer video, but there was a lot I wanted to share with you. I wanted to kind of circle back onto the things we've accomplished. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, below, please like, share, subscribe. Um, anyone that you believe can find value in what I'm offering, I would love for you to send them uh, you know, some of this content or send them my way. You can visit my website, uh, find me on any social media outlet, um, and I'd love to sh continue to, to build sharing all of this with all of you. So have a blessed weekend, uh, enjoy yourselves, enjoy your family, enjoy your time off, and we'll see you on Monday.